there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. For the first time ever, Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Centre opened its doors to a television crew. This is our house. You're a visitor. Given incredible access to this uniquely female space... Can you back up for me, please? ..that is home to some of America's most dangerous women. All I can see is my whole hand filled with blood. Girl got her eyes beat. When someone swings first, win the fight. Charged with everything from drug trafficking, armed robbery, gang violence and even murder. <laughs> Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive and every day can be a battle to stay safe. Do you feel like you're going to harm yourself? Oh, my God. When good girls go bad, anything can happen. This is fucking... Oh my God, I'm gonna break something. It's a busy day at Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Centre. The jail can hold around 350 women at one time. The inmates are categorised by those awaiting trial, wherein orange and housed in pod three, and those who've been sentenced, they wear green and are imprisoned in pod two. So the orange pods, the women that are wearing orange, they are classified as pre-trial inmates. Now they are not found guilty yet, they are just being charged with a crime. The women that are in the green, they are sentenced. All right, welcome to 3A. Thank you. Thank All right, you. hopefully you guys can uh, obey by the rules, okay? We will. Okay. In pod 3A, a new intake of women awaiting trial have arrived, which always causes tension as the women settle in and jockey for position. Can you back up for me, please? Can you back up for me, please? Ooh, you're looking a little feisty today. You got that? You got that? <laughs> it's the ones that are just coming in that always stir up the drama that they're not comfortable, they don't got their daily routine yet, so they're, they're fucking up everybody else's routine. <laughs> That's when all the drama gets created. 24-year-old Corrie Howe has been in WCC for over two months. Because of the new intake of women, she is moving into a new cell, which she'll be sharing with her friend, Crystal. Hi, buddy. This is my new roommate, Crystal. This is my filing cabinet under here. It's personal letters, letters I'm writing, jail mail. Oh, I got lots of that. Yeah. Well, we get these things called pen pals. We usually meet guys on the paddy wagon when we're going to court, give them our information, we start writing. And some of them continue to write after we get out. Some of us just want to pass time. Most of these are from my boyfriend. <laughs> I send him a lot of letters and pictures. Sex letters. Actually, um, I got one of those <laughs> to send them tonight. Right. It's about as good as life gets, yeah. writing sex stories. I can't wait to feel your big dick inside my tight and juicy pussy while you go harder and harder. Touching my titties, you flip me over and continue to go even harder while you're pulling my hair and smacking my ass. As one of the jail's more familiar faces, she's learned many of the life hacks that make a sentence more tolerable. All right, tampon making. <laughs> with a shitty pad. There's two different kinds of pads in this place. These ones are the shitty ones and they're harder to make, but open it. You gotta peel off this wonderful top layer. If you're a female, you know how much using pads sucks, so you become creative. Expression in jail. You gotta comb out this extra fluff. And then the inside of the tampon. Depending on how thick you want it, it's how much fluff you use. Roll it up nice and tight. Put it all together. Fold this little flap down. Roll it. Tie it in a knot so it doesn't come undone. 
And voila, you have a tampon with your little pull string. One of the first things I learned how to do when I came to jail, and thank God, because pads suck. Yeah? Is she here? New inmates need to work out the pecking order, and Victoria Diaz, AKA Baby D, thinks she's a force to be reckoned with. There's like a like a good handful of girls that's like, everybody wants to talk to us. Everybody wants to like know what we're doing. Me, Nia, Iris, my roommate. This is our pod. And they see how I walk around, my head high. I don't, I'm not scared of nobody. They can see that in me. So it just, I come off as intimidating to, to a lot of the females. Take me with you. I'm not gonna like fix the way I walk and the way I talk to accommodate somebody else because they feel intimidated by the way that I am. This is just the way that I am. If you don't like it, then get the fuck from around me. I don't know what to tell you. As a dominant clique, Baby D and friends are not interested in integrating with new inmates. They show their prowess by making a cake, whilst a group of new girls watch on. Happy birthday! What the fuck is wrong with these bitches? I swear to God, if one of these new bitches stare at me one more time, I'm gonna fucking sock them in their face, cause they, yo, I, it's like I got a dick on my forehead. Like, what the fuck y'all want? Like, everyone's staring at me like, what the fuck y'all want? Oh my goodness. I'm very stubborn. I'm very loud, outspoken. I don't know who the fuck these bitches think they are. I could be nice, but if I don't like you, I'm, I'm rude as hell. Still, you still staring at me, bitch? Very violent, yep. The fuck? Impulsive. No one, no one ever got to be scared to get their ass whooped, and that's on dead dogs. We all need to fucking value up in this bitch. <laughs> you said what? What? I try to work on the whole violent part, but you got to do what you got to do. I can't stand these bitches, man. Any of y'all, any of y'all, y'all just, y'all just be grilling me. I don't know what the fuck it is, but y'all be grilling me like I got something on my forehead that y'all want. The cake's on the table, not on my forehead. Just don't do it again. Nothing. The fuck? Got your track shoes on, but what you running from? See, I know where you going and where you coming from. That's some maturity showing. It's just a baby in you. For 21-year-old Victoria Diaz, gangster life and its occupational hazard of prison is in the blood. Her mother was a well-known drug dealer who gave birth to Victoria in prison. Who knew that you was in the sports like that? Well, all players, because they all play. Everyone knows my mother. And my mom's name is tattooed on my arm. So they're like, oh, Wanda's your mom. Everybody knows not to fuck with me. Can't tell you back the love that I get. Like. Yo, you looking like a whole CO, girl. A whole CO. Whole CO? You know what she look like? A whole inmate. A whole inmate. <laughs> and a I try to be good. Since I turned 21, I've been trying to be good. But people be trying me. I give them like two tries. Because I don't like being tested. There ain't even running water in the hole. I have a twin. No, my twin was stillborn, and my twin was going to be named Crystal. That's why my middle name is Crystal. So I blame everything on Crystal. <sighs> it's, not, it's not Victoria. It was Crystal. Victoria is awaiting trial for breaking and entering and assault and battery. She attacked her ex, who was allegedly cheating with her best friend. There was a door that was cracked open, so I just walked inside the house, closed the door, locked it, snatched him out of bed did whatever I did, and then I ran to the living room, beat her up. But that was my best friend for 12 years, so she knows better. She knows what we used to do to other females that did things like that, so she thought she was gonna get like a golden ticket or something, and I wasn't gonna do it to her. She already knows how I, how I get down. I have her name tattooed on my back, too. That's what's fucked up. I'll, I'll fuck that bitch up anytime I see her, because she deserves it. Despite the tension, one of the new inmates tries to build bridges. I know you ain't. No, why we got, why, why, why we got beef though? We don't. I, I, I don't see why they have a Because you stare. 
like me to. I read, so I'm just, it's, it's, I don't like that shit. I get stared at by the CEOs all day. I don't want y'all staring at me. And it's not just you. You took it upon yourself to come sit here and try to settle something that is not even there. Okay. I just, it was directing in that direction. That whole table, yeah. She sat down with me and Katie, like, oh, I don't know what your beef is. Like, no, the beef that you think that you think there is, it's in your head. You want there to be beef, but you're not gonna win this. Like, she was just, she was just trying way too hard to fit in, and she just, she didn't fit in. Don't put your hand over this phone here. What are you doing? So the guy doesn't matter. Go around, and don't go behind me either. I'm not that you up. What's wrong with you? Really? I told you when I first got here, I don't dap people up. Go ahead. She do that. I don't do that. What's up? Go ahead. Nothing? No. If I see Iris or if I see somebody, like, I'll dap them up, you know what I'm saying? It's like a greeting without having to say words, but I don't know you. I don't know you. I'm not going to touch your hand. I'm not going to give you no fist pounder. I'm not going to do any of that. I, that's, she, gave, she went like this, and then she went like this, and I just like, uh -huh. I'm like, <laughs> no, I can't. Walters. They want you medical. 26 years old and eight months pregnant, Vanessa, like many of the women who come through the doors of the Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Center, is battling a heroin addiction. I know that a lot of people just judge me off the rip when it comes to drugs and me being pregnant, but I tell them to, until you walk the day in my shoes or until you actually have experienced it, please don't say anything. Or I just tell people don't even touch subject on that because that's not fair because you're just judging off of what you heard. In the US, around 10% of the female prison population is thought to be pregnant and midwives from the local hospital regularly visit the jail to examine the pregnant inmates. Mm -hmm. Does that hurt? Or just yeah, that like really hurt really bad. I don't know why that hurt so bad. Here? No, up here when you were just right here. I don't know why. Ow, shit. Ow, excuse my language. That hurts way too much. <laughs> She's growing fine. So I basically say they don't like to do it before 37 weeks, but you won't be here by 37 weeks. Well, you'll be, it'll be close. Sounds great. Nice and strong, nice and regular. Good. All right. Did you get things for labor pain with your other births? Yes. Um, my Well, my second one I didn't because I went all natural, because okay. I jumped from four and a half centimeters to nine and a half centimeters oh. in a half an hour. Uh -huh. uh, but my first one I did, I got epidural. Mm -hmm. And this one I plan on every intention on epidural oh. again. <laughs> I never want to have a natural labor in my life. That is too painful for me. All right, let's go talk to them. This will be Vanessa's third child. And when you were pregnant in 2013, was your first pregnancy? No, no, my, no, it wasn't my first pregnancy, but it was my first live birth that I given birth to. Okay. How far did you go to term? Did you yeah. Okay. I had her five days early, but that's, that's full, that's full okay. term. How much did that baby weigh? Um, seven pounds, 14 ounces. Oh, that's a good size. Yeah. First baby, boy or girl? Girl. She's adopted. Okay. And then your next pregnancy? It was a girl, vaginal, normal, full term. And where is she? She is in, um, well, right now she's in foster care. Me losing my kids was one of, yeah, was probably one of my darkest moments as well. Because it, to me, I feel like it's not just you physically being there, I feel like it's your mind being there as well. Or like going, just even like I said, like doing an open adoption, that killed me the most. But like, I did what I thought was okay. Like she, the people that she's with, they love her. They'll do anything for her. And I'm grateful for that. I couldn't ask for anything more. My youngest, she's in foster care. I didn't want these things for my kids, obviously. I want my kids. It's just, that's what addiction does to you. Go ahead. Vanessa, like all new inmates, must spend at least five days in the orientation unit. Most of the ladies, about 85 to 90% using um, drugs heavily. It's pretty much detoxing unit. They go on through the detox while in here. If they need longer than five days, they're gonna stay here longer. They're very needy and they're not feeling good. It's like flu-like symptoms and they have a lot of vomiting and diarrhea. 
So they constantly need more clothing, they constantly need this and that. Thank you. And it takes them a little bit to get it out of their system. And that's what we call detoxing. We've had a lot of pregnant women in and out of here before. Unfortunately, if they are heavy drug users and then they give birth to the baby, from what I hear, it is not a pleasant sight to see. Um, you know, the baby can have everything from, they could be shaking, crying all the time. You know, there's just so many different medical issues that come about when a baby is detoxing, and it is really sad. It's a really sad thing to see. No, no, the one that I, that I was told to mix together, right, is the eternity oil. Okay. I know for me, but... being pregnant with the belly and all, it works for me. Yeah. My one worry is having the baby here in jail. Because my daughter, unfortunately, she would be detoxing from the Subutex, because that's the medication that I'm on. I wouldn't be able to stay there and comfort her. Nothing. I would be there for the first two to three days, that's it. And they would bring me right back here. For both my daughters, my other daughters that I had, they were both born addicted to drugs. Um, one of them, unfortunately, my first one, she was born addicted to heroin. Oh, I know what people say, and I know what they see. They see somebody that either A, doesn't care, B, is just a junkie, or C, the famous thing, oh, you care more about the drugs than you do your kid, or why couldn't you just stop? Why is it that your kids couldn't make you stop? It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the hold that addiction has on you. I feel like this time, if I have my kid in jail, I, I know I'll lose the baby. I know I would. And I just feel like all bets would be off and I just wouldn't care no more. An odd. Angelina Morales. Vanessa's being moved out of orientation and into a pre-trial pod where she will await her day in court. I've been to jail more than five times since I was 22. The reason why I'm here today is because they call it a violation of probation. Yes, 3V, mom, come on. Me and my two best friends, we ended up getting arrested together pretty much um, because pretty much my ID was used for stolen stuff. Bye, ladies. God bless and good luck. Hi, auntie. Huh? Dude, I have to tell you so much shit. Your sister arrested me. Who? Your sister. My sister. Dude, she's... Vanessa's best friend, Kimberly, who committed the crime with her, is also in pod 3B. Okay. <laughs> what do you? Oh, yes, yes. I'm so happy. And luckily for her, they'll also be sharing a cell. Hi, Auntie. Dude, I miss you so much, I was crying. This is my best friend. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm in your room with you. Okay. I knew it too, because they were moving everybody, and I'm like, yo, the pregnancy match is already in here. And then I was like, she's gonna come in here. I was like, I know it. <laughs> One of my biggest hopes for right now, for the instant future, would be to get into this program and have the baby and my mom be there. I definitely want to stay clean. Crystal Lugo has been in WCC for the last eight months. She's charged with kidnapping, assault and batteries with dangerous weapons, and assault and intimidating a witness. Authorities today calling the scenario an organized torture chamber. An unidentified teenager from New Jersey taped to a chair in the basement of a home in Massachusetts. News 12 New Jersey's Eric Lanskroner has the story. Once inside, Crystal Lugo and the others organized a deliberate, organized torture chamber for the victim. Unfortunately for her, the nature of her alleged crimes has been discovered by prison hard girl Baby D, who knew the alleged victim. I couldn't be on the same unit with her, so either I was going to beat her up or make her PC herself. It was determined by the supervisors that uh, Crystal Lugo's information got out to the other inmates. Uh, I don't think Lugo was requesting to come on protective custody, but I think it was by the supervisor decided to be everyone's best interest to get her off the unit. Why am I shot? Crystal's been placed in segregation under protective custody and in the care of Councillor Peach. My name is Richard Peach. I'm a correctional counselor. I've been doing that for the last three years. My office is right in the middle of segregation or the special management unit. The idea was to have a counselor or a caseworker in the unit at all times, so if any inmates were having a hard time de uh, dealing with being a 1B, 
being locked up 23 hours a day, they would have a caseworker or a counselor who could see them. Baby D claims Crystal's victim was her gang sister. It's not my real little sister, not my blood little sister, but I was taking care of that little girl. She's like my little sister. We was living together for a really long time. Her and her boyfriend and her brother put my little sister in a dog cage, cut all her hair off, burn her with cigarettes. Crystal beat her in the legs with a crowbar so she couldn't move. Like, I was so surprised, like, that was her, like, because she's she got way fatter than what she looked like, so I didn't recognize her. We didn't know at first Victoria Diaz knew the victim as well as she did, so we weren't, you know, we weren't prepared for it and we weren't expecting uh, this. Uh, so when this happened with Diaz, when she was talking to a lieutenant and then um, freaking out, uh, it's the first time we knew about it that Diaz was actually either friends with or related to the victim. Uh, for that. If we would have known that beforehand, they probably would have been separated. A machete was held at the victim's neck at the direction of Crystal, and Crystal told the victim that if she lied or continued to lie, they would hold the machete closer to her neck. Police in Massachusetts say it was a few days after Christmas when they received a call from a juvenile being tortured in the basement of a home. When they arrived, they say they found a 16-year-old sitting on the edge of a mattress, crying and scared. She told police that about eight people, four of them in court Wednesday, stood around her as she was tied to a chair, burned with a cigarette, and her head was shaved. All of it, retaliation for what she told officers was a home invasion that they believe she had set up. See, the problem here is nobody really knows the truth, you know what I mean? There was no cage, so they tried to get my brother with rape but it was not him. And when the girl seen, when the victim seen that he was being charged with it, she called the detective and told the detective that that wasn't the case. He had, my brother had nothing to do with it. The gang is the one who did the home invasion on us, but I don't know if Diaz has anything to do with it. I'd be telling them, if you guys want me to handle things the way I handled things last year, I would drag an inmate and bring her in my room just to fight her. I would drag you into any the closest room. The clo any, any room that's the closest to where we're at, that's just how it's going to be. Victoria just responds to everything with violence. Just doesn't have a lot of great coping skills. And uh, she hasn't been taught a lot of great coping skills. Like I said, she grew up in houses and gangs and just not a lot of opportunities. Personally, I think that they should move her because I've been here for eight months and haven't had a single issue. We did get along. She would ask me questions. I'd tell her we've talked a couple times. This just all came out of nowhere. Oh, sorry, wrong door. Close the door, please. Crystal's troubles are bigger than Baby D. In retaliation for the alleged crimes, a hit's been ordered on her by a local gang known as the Kilby Street Gang, of which Baby D is supposedly a member. Rumor is two members are deliberately trying to get arrested in order to get sent to the prison to carry out the revenge attack. Kilby's a gang from Worcester, and they got a price on her head because she snitched on two, two of our guys or whatever. So there's two, there was two girls coming in, and they was going to beat her up or whatever for a price or whatever. I'll do that shit for free. I don't need no money for that. I will beat you up. I'll bug 50 your face, like cut them straight across their face to make them look different. They ain't going to look the same after I'm done. I stomp you out. I don't jump people, though. If I'm getting jumped, though, obviously we're going to come back with more females, but, you know, regular stuff. They're not going to put Crystal back in here. She's scared for her life. Until the jail can figure out if the threat is real and Diaz is telling the truth, Crystal's life could depend on her remaining in segregation. In the Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Center, it's the inmates' favorite day of the week, Commissary Day. So Commissary Day is Tuesday. I guess they call it around the jail, turn up Tuesday. When Commissary comes, it is a bit of a chaotic day, to say the least. Inmates in the jail can order extras like sweets, snacks, and toiletries, as long as they have money in their account. One of the inmates, India, seemingly something of an entrepreneur, 
has spotted an opportunity to turn a profit from her prison stay. Buying up lots of commissary, she sells it to the other inmates, often at double or even triple the price. This store running is against the rules, and the officers are always looking to crack down on this scam. She could get up to 10 days in the hole if caught. You want to see my stash? It's down here. Am I supposed to say this? I might go to jail, in jail. Um, so I have a store. Store runners like India often take advantage of new inmates who don't yet have money in their accounts. They can put their purchase on a slate, but the interest rates mirror those of a loan shark. <laughs> this is my stash. I could get in trouble, obviously, if they see all this food. When new women come in the pod, they will act like they're trying to help them. And they'll say, listen, I'll give you a soup because I know you're detoxing, you're not feeling well, but you have to give me two or three in return. Then you're kind of in debt with the other inmates in the pod, and they say, you know, then we could have many issues such as if you don't pay this back, then you're gonna get jumped or something of that sort. When people come, they're like detoxing off like dope or like whatever, or they haven't, they've been smoking crack for weeks and weeks and they haven't ate. So when they come, like all that comes back and they're like so hungry and stuff, but they crave sweet stuff. So I just buy a whole bunch of sweet shit. Addicts crave sugar because it has a similar feel-good effect on the brain to drugs and alcohol. And it's just like I'm used to doing this. I don't know, like, just like with the shit that I've done all my life, but it's a hustle. It's a hustle in jail. Yeah, we got charged with trafficking. Trafficking of heroin and trafficking of cocaine. There is really no difference between what I do in and out of jail. That's bad. I mean, it's food right now, so that's good. But it's bad. That's, that's bad. That means I haven't learned shit, huh? <laughs> no, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's the same thing. It's really the same thing. It's the same exact thing. In pre-trial 3B, eight months pregnant heroin addict Vanessa's only chance to get out of jail before her due date and to keep her child is to get onto a residential drug treatment program. A long-term residential program is somewhere that we actually help the women apply to, so that is a large part of my job as a caseworker. Uh, if they're willing to change and they want to stay clean and sober when they are released from jail, we will help them you know, with all the paperwork and do the referrals. There are programs for women who have just given birth, dealing with postpartum. There are programs for families, so women are able to take their children with them and be housed there. So there's so many different kinds of programs that we work with with the women. I'm filling out um, an inmate request form because you have to fill one of these out in order to like see medical or to see a sick call if you need like something for like the bathroom or you're nauseous or anything like that or to see a counselor. Hey, I'm a meeting with you? Yeah. Great minds think alike. I have court on um, Thursday and I'm trying to get into a program and my counselor can help me and she can make phone calls with me. Yes, I have a life coach, her name's Lisa. She might have a program for me this Thursday because I need to get into a program by Thursday, especially because I'm pregnant and I'm due next month. Hi, is this Lisa? Hi, Lisa, this is Liz Davis. I'm a correctional counselor assigned to Vanessa Louders. Hi. Hi, Lisa. Um, so I talked to my mom, and she told me that you supposedly might have a program for me for Thursday. Yes, I'm looking into it now. I actually emailed Dan Ford um, this morning because I needed, I just want confirmation that, you know, if you're getting out, if that, you know, Oh, yeah, because Judge Cal said if I have a concrete plan and a way to get there, that he, quote, unquote, will entertain it, and he will definitely for sure do it on this date. Okay. I put all this effort into getting into a program. You can't do what you did to me last time. I won't. Okay. I promise. I will get to that today, and I will live. I'll call you um, later on today. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you, Lisa. Help. 
Let me know about everything else if you can. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Oh, yeah, you're covering the break. Yeah, I'll be right out. All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. One of my biggest hopes, be able to maintain life on life terms clean. America. <laughs> and just to be able to sit there and be like, yeah, it's been hard. It's been hell. But I'm finally doing it. Vanessa's best friend, Kimberly, who's currently sharing a cell with her, is there for moral support. I'm so happy I've been here with my best friend. That's my best friend from the street. But I'm just glad, like I said, that I'm in here with her. Because she's definitely one person that can keep me out of my own mind. So Thursday. So Thursday. Well, I don't know. You should be getting out. You, so you She say. should be getting out. And I, I should be going to a program. That's how that cookie's gonna crumble on Thursday. Vanessa is having positive thoughts about it. Every time she says something's gonna happen, it usually does. <laughs> and she thinks everybody's gonna go home. So hopefully that happens. Hopefully you won't see me. <laughs> Crystal Lugo has been moved into segregation for her own safety. Inmate Victoria Diaz has claimed a retaliatory hit has been placed upon Crystal by the Kilby Street Gang, of which Diaz is allegedly a member. Councillor Peach, who is in charge of segregation, has received a letter from Crystal. Ms Lugo is appealing her being placed on protective custody status. She believes that she should not have been moved. It should have been the other inmate. Since Diaz has been in 3A, there has been a few altercations between her and other inmates that she has started. I've been incarcerated for eight months and remained in 3A the entire time with no issues and people knowing my case. While being in 3A, I've made a few great friends and companionships that I wish to continue. I understand that my protection and safety is important, but this is very unfair. Please take into consideration what I have said above and notice that I'm not the problem. I would greatly appreciate it if I moved back to 3A. Thank you in advance. Lugo's still saying she has no idea how her information got out, but obviously she gave it to somebody. That's why inmates are always told not to share or anything that's going on with their cases because the information gets out like this. It continually becomes a problem and kind of leaves us in a tough spot. Before the officers can make a decision about Crystal, they have to investigate if the gang threat is true. Leading this investigation is Lieutenant Sherrard. After I met with Victoria Diaz, I went and looked up the information on the computer. It appears to me that she was repeating to me verbatim what was on the news report. I'm having some people look into reviewing phone calls to see maybe she made a call to someone. Hello. Hi, Mommy. Hi, baby. How you doing? I'm going the officers are listening to a recording of Victoria Diaz's phone calls to see if any information was given on Crystal and if her Kilby Street gang mates are coming in. Kilby is known for uh, drug dealing and uh, sex trafficking, and you know they have money, and um, it could be possible that they, you know, they could get that done. So you know, just gotta be aware of. Uh, these Kilby members, and if they're coming in, and you know, keep a close eye on them and identify them. Um, we look uh, for tattoos, information from informants and law enforcement. Help us out a lot in identifying these inmates. Eight months pregnant Vanessa needs to get on a drug treatment program before she gives birth. If she doesn't, she'll lose custody of her baby. She's desperate to speak to her mother to find out if there's been any progress. I'm gonna kill my mom. Yeah, she didn't answer. That's upsetting, I have court tomorrow. How is it that my mom's not answering me? And people know how I get before court because it's anxiety filled, A, B, I'm nervous, and C, like, this is important to me and my kid. Like, I, it's a program, it's not like it's just like, oh, hey, an IOP, or oh, hey, a methadone clinic, or a suboxone clinic. No, like, this is like where I'm gonna be living, this is where I have to start my life again. Like, and it's not fair. When I'm doing all this, it scares me because it's bringing up my stress level and I always go early in my pregnancy. So if I have this baby here, that will kill me, that will crush me. And I don't think like, and it sucks to say this like this, but like, I don't think I'd be able to stay clean. Cause I can't be, I wouldn't be able to be in jail, have a baby, lose a baby, be on medication and then detox from a medication. Oh, and then do jail time and want to be mentally stable and, and stay clean. That's not going to happen for me. 
I don't have the devices and the people and the services that I would need in place for that to happen. So I, I, I'm hoping and praying. Lieutenant Sherard and her officers have been giving evidence on Crystal Lugo's investigation. Today, the senior staff members are meeting to discuss it and look at her appeal. And Crystal Lugo? Um, Victoria Diaz came up to me stating that she just found out that Crystal Lugo was the person that, in the case for the teenage girl that was placed in the cage, and she claimed that the teenage victim was her sister. She also stated to me that there's supposed to be two or three Kilby Street Gang women coming into the facility to take care of her. So I had Mascaro do some phone reviews for me. Diaz said, yeah, I just found out about it just now. Mm -hmm. But she didn't make any comments about causing any harm or making any threats to her. The Kilby Street Gang is, a, is now become a bigger issue for us because mm -hmm. we all know that they are much more violent than most of the um, gang involvement that other women have. The threats against Lugo mm -hmm. seem to be real. With the jail worried about the Kilby Street Gang coming in and carrying out a hit on Crystal, Putting her back with the other inmates could see her life under threat. It's early morning at Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Centre, and court day is finally here for Vanessa. Can you lift one foot at a time, please? Thank you. Great, and he's going to scan you in. You can have a seat, number three. She needs the judge to release her to a drug rehabilitation program. I know if I have this child in jail, DCF will take the baby. And I know I'll have to lose another kid. And like, I, the pain of losing a child, I think it's one of the worst things ever that you can ever go through. I feel like it's literally a piece of you that gets ripped. And no one knows what that feels like until they actually go through it. I can grab these? Yep. Okay. <sighs> I just don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to live my life like this. Because this. It's not fun checking in and out, getting body scans, strip search, just to go to a court date. It's not fun. And then just place one foot at yep. a time and bring it down. Good. That shit's overrated. Uh, and I got arrested. Here. I hate this part. I feel like this is the most embarrassing part about it all. Belly shackles. You don't even have shackles. No, part no part I can't eight. get them down here. But you can't get them down here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I see everybody that owes me money. 24? That's 24 dollars? Yeah. I expect you to know that once you get your commissary, you have to pay me back. I hate to have to harass you for it, but if I have to, I will, or I'll send somebody to go tell them, like, yo, Indy says she wants her shit. This um, cheese is a dollar, so I'll be like, all right, I want two dollars, or I want two of them, so I get three. Like, if, if they put money on my books, I give them, I give it to them for double. If they don't give it to me in my books, then I'll give it to them for triple. I want double of it. Sometimes they're like, oh, that's a lot. Well, I don't really care. It's like, do you want it or not? And everybody knows either you put it, you wrap it in a shirt, put it in a trash can, and we just switch off trash cans every, all day. Oh, oh, I already got my stuff. Those are the days that are kind of like iffy too, because I don't want to put out too much like alarm towards the officers because they, they'll they see like, oh, what's all this movement going towards your room? Or they see all the trash cans. That's why I try to like um, only deal with people that I know are discreet about it. Like if I know they're gonna be like too loud or too showy about it, I just won't deal with them. I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. To be honest, a lot of the things that we catch in this facility is due to, I guess, what the inmates call snitches. Um, we have confidential informants. That's what we call them as staff. They'll let us know that something's going on, and then we will investigate it further. Um, we can look into their cash transactions. So if they've had people from the outside deposit money onto their books that you know deposits money on someone else's books as well, we're able to catch them that way or simply just observing them in the pot and trading the items or going to a store and coming away from the room with a bunch of items in their hand. Although the correctional officers are aware India has a store, they don't have enough information to investigate her. It's the end of the day, and the court intakes and returnees have arrived back at the jail. All right, ladies, head to this left. Head to left. I got a bed. I got a bed. I have a program, and I'm going to a bed. But I can't go to the 30th because the piece of paper of proof, even though my lawyer and the COs that were downstairs were, should have been enough proof, um, of my transportation, right? It was a transportation or some shit. The piece of paper wasn't there pretty much for proof, some bullshit. And so I have to wait till the 30th when my lawyer gets back from vacation to be able to go to the program. When I got out of court, I was so upset because I could have had my bed, been at my bed. I should be in my bed right now, and I'm not. I'm antsy because they said that it was in the making, that it's all fine. I have the bed, I have this, I have that, everything set up, but I just don't have the paperwork yet. And that's and that's what the judge wants is the paper documentation stating that it's all solid concrete. If nothing works out by the 30th and I have to have the baby in jail, it's gonna be probably one of the worst things that's happened in my life. In their old shared cell, Crystal cellmate Corey has received news about her absent friend. So this letter is from my old roommate, Crystal. She said, Corey, so I just met with Lieutenant Sherrard and I have to stay in here longer. I guess I'm really not safe. So she's investigating multiple people. The Kilby Street Gang put a hit out on me. People are coming to jail to get me or are already here. I can't even believe this. I'm so scared to get out of jail now, to know that I have to watch my back at all times and that there's a hit out on me is terrifying. I miss you and her so much. I can't stop crying about this. I just want to collapse in you guys' arms right now. I feel like my whole world just came crashing down. I wish you were still over here. I feel so many emotions. Me and you had the best times in our cell. What the fuck? I just want to scream. Well, I'm going to lay down and listen to music. I'll be waiting for your reply. Love you. Always, Crystal. There's consequences for your actions, and she just has serious consequences. Future for Chris, but I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. It's just um, as a matter of who gets there first. Next time. Thinking that this is your house, because I'm going to tell you right now, this is our house. You're a visitor. Yeah.
Ich bin ein bisschen mit dem Kind.